of the tape. Renell Whitaker against Oscar De La Hoya. You see the age difference of which so much has been written and said. De La Hoya with a four inch height advantage. De La Hoya with a four inch reach advantage. The Nevada Athletic Commission has weighed both fighters in their dressing rooms tonight. And fairly surprisingly, Whitaker tonight weighs 157 pounds, 10 and a half pounds more than at yesterday's weigh-in. De La Hoya, only 151. You make anything of that, Roy? No, it's just that Whitaker probably came down from a heavier weight class because Whitaker is older, his body's matured more, and I'm sure he's carrying more weight on an everyday basis than De La Hoya. Punch that numbers, Larry. These numbers were taken from uh, two fights in recent years that really meant something to both fighters for De La Hoya. That was against Chavez and Gonzalez in his last fight. And for Whitaker, it was the rematches with Rivera and McGirt. And you can see that Whitaker was throwing more punches than De La Hoya. De La Hoya landing a high, higher percentage. You take a look at the jabs here now. And you can see that once again, higher percentage for De La Hoya, more thrown by Whitaker. Whitaker will have to keep that active to be good in this fight. Rules of the bout with America's scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Jim, they're changing this one. The Pernell Whitaker, Oscar De La Hoya is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and it can be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round only. Jim. A largely pro De La Hoya crowd as the challenger, he'll come out first and get ready for this crowd in the Thomas and Mack Center to blow the lid off for Oscar. As has been the case through the early stages of his professional career, remember, gold medal in Barcelona 1992, 23 pro fights, 23 wins, 20 KOs. World championships at 135 and 140. Now he tries for another one at 147. And Pernell Whitaker stalls to try to put the pressure on De La Hoya. Shouldn't put any pressure on De La Hoya because De La Hoya has waited long enough. He's waited all this time, so what is a few more minutes going to hurt? La Hora De La Hoya, the hour of De La Hoya. Or is it the hour of Sweet Pea Whitaker? demonstrating with his body language he believes these moments belong to him the professional record 40 wins the one loss to jose luis ramirez an obvious bogus decision later avenged the draw with chavez obviously should have been a victory for dello i mean for whitaker Brunel likes to say i haven't lost a fight since my last amateur defeat 16 years ago let's go to michael buffer 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada, Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you, in association with Main Events Monitors, presents 12 rounds of boxing for the welterweight championship of the world. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Chairman, Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners, Nat Carasali, Lorenzo Fertitta, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Executive Director, Mark Ratner. Physicians in attendance at ringside are Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. James Wishkane, Dr. Al Capana, and Dr. Charles Signorino. The timekeepers at the bell and counting for the knockdown seconds are Jane Broadfoot and Mike Lachella. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. President, Jose Suleiman. WBC Supervisor at ringside, John Morris. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, Jerry Roth, and Dalby Shirley. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance here in Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, this is it. The battle for pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. From the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red and weighing 146 and one half pounds. In 1992, he won Olympic gold in Barcelona. And since becoming a professional, he has a perfect record of 23 consecutive victories without a loss, 20 by knockout, and he has won three world titles. Tonight, he is the challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros from East LA. Here is the golden boy, the three-time world champion and reigning WBC super lightweight champion of the world. The undefeated Oscar De La Hoya. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing lavender trim with black and weighing also 146 and one half pounds. In 1984, he captured Olympic gold in Los Angeles. And as a professional, his record stands at 40 victories with one defeat and one draw. And 17 of his victories are by knockout. Since 1989, he has won six world title belts without a loss. From Norfolk, Virginia, presenting the four-time world champion and reigning pound for pound the defending welterweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. That's you, baby, that's you. Put this up. All right, Whitaker, Pernell. All right, gentlemen, we've gone through all the instructions in the dressing room. This is uh, for the championship of the world. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? The champion, let's get it on! Whitaker thinks he can frustrate and then do things that De La Hoya never done to him before. De La Hoya believes that basically he can walk through the smaller Whitaker. One of them is right. And we're about to find out which one it is. If he walks through Whitaker, he will surprise Roy. 
One final fascinating piece of body language. De La Hoya refusing even to glance at Whitaker, even during the referee's instructions when they stood two feet away from each other, more or less face to face. De La Hoya looking upward in what I take to be a tribute to his deceased mother. When I see Whitaker's going to work the jab and try to work Oscar's body early. Watch out, come on, watch out, watch out. There have been three clinches in the first 30 seconds, indication indicating again that Whitaker is going to try to frustrate the younger fighter. Whitaker showing the jab early and lateral movement. He jabs twice, moves to his right, jabs three times, moves to his right. De La Hoya not yet finding a chance to throw a combination. Tentative right hand by De La Hoya there. He sticks the jab without a lot of conviction. Watch the hands in there, come on. Hey, let him, hey, hey. Remember in the early rounds against Miguel and Hel Gonzalez, De La Hoya looked as though he wanted to take Gonzalez's head off with the jab. He hasn't thrown one of those laser shots yet. There's the first left hook and Whitaker partially blocked it with his shoulder. And again. Gonna be awfully hard as Roy joins Jones pointed out earlier for De La Hoya to land a left hook. Whitaker is doing a smart thing by using his jab and attacking Oscar first. Watch out! Watch out! go! Hey, 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 hey! Hey! shot by Pernell Whitaker. Southpaw against conventional fighter. It's always fascinating to see which man will appear to be comfortable with the style confrontation first. And so far in this round, if anybody appears comfortable, it's Whitaker. Because he's done it so many times over and over again. First surprise here is that Whitaker has been probably a little bit more the aggressor than De La Hoya. Harrying with each other as round one comes to a close. When we go to Oscar De La Hoya's corner, where trainer Jesus Rivero speaks Spanish, our interpreter is Ray Torres. You need to use that, that no, waist. No, you need to be moving. Don't, don't, don't get, get too close to him. Okay. Don't be standing up too, too high. Okay? Take a step backwards. You're, you're standing too tall. You gotta move your waist. You gotta move your waist. When you enter, you go back. Boom, lo haces fallar, y todos lo golpeas. Lo tienes que fintar, chamo. You gotta faint him. No le aceptes esa pelea en más en corto, e inclinándote por el lado. Second set. Then you see the father of Oscar De La Hoya yelling instructions to his son. His son often looks back to see what his father thinks of what's happening. Joel De La Hoya, the man who first got Oscar into boxing when he was five and a half years old. In round one, by CompuBox numbers, Pernell Whitaker's southpaw stance nullified De La Hoya's jab. De La Hoya landing only one of 14 jabs in the round. And that speaks to the Whitaker camp strategy, Larry, of taking away Oscar De La Hoya's dominant left side. Yep. If a team can beat you with the passing game, you try to take it away and make them throw, beat you with the running game. He's trying to take away the strength of De La Hoya, which up until this point in his career has been that rapier left hand. Whitaker getting low and peeking up at De La Hoya, trying to keep his head and body moving side to side to stay away from De La Hoya while he tries to bob up toward punching opportunities. 
Hard right hand to the body by De La Hoya. Well, Good comes hand back to the straight left. You can, Don't see. you can see that De La Hoya is much more robotic uh, than uh, the more than Whitaker, who improvises. Good counter by De La Hoya. Good counter right hand by De La Hoya. Misses with the left hook. Follows, lands a couple straight right hands. Smiles as Whitaker clowns a little bit for the crowd. De La Hoya almost landed a left hook over Whitaker's right shoulder there. Oscar getting more aggressive. He was tentative in round number one as he tried to figure out Whitaker's southpaw style. Now there might be a little mouse already above the right eye of Fernell Whitaker. It looks as though something is there. Crowd chanting Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Roy, how big an edge do you give to Whitaker in comfort level so far? Well, now, in the first round, he had a big comfort advantage. This round is not happening as, uh, the same. Oscar's making a few adjustments here with his feet to allow himself to be more comfortable in round two. And he's throwing the right hand more, which is what he's going to have to do to legitimately attack Brunel Whitaker. Right hand to the body by De La Hoya. Whitaker with a counter left. Oscar keeps trying to land his left hook, which is a hard proposition against Whitaker. Oscar's getting a little bit impatient here. He wants to hit Whitaker with a good punch, but he can't seem to find a way to hit Whitaker. Work out, work out, work out. Here's a way to hit him. Two right hands inside by De La Hoya. Back Whitaker up. Much better round for Oscar in round number two. Take the play away from you. Yeah, the two up, Ron. Huh? Yeah, baby, we all right. We all right. We all right. Hey, double up that jab. The first four. Yeah, yeah, you're not the first four. The first hey. four is your, your fight. You gotta right? double up that jab and go to the body. Don't be afraid to hurt this guy. Hurt this guy. I'm yeah. inside. Every now and then, people, when he gets close, steal him with that left hand. I will. All right, the left hand is right there. All right. Okay? But the jab, just remember, just snap the jab and step him out. Keep stepping around. All, right. all this kid is trying to hit you with the right hand. All now, right. As soon as you get in the inside, now he's finally throwing up the uppercut. Yeah. As soon as you get that first, yeah. let you do first with the uppercut. Then go to the body second. Right. Okay? Starting hurt this hey. So far, it's been mostly a tactical fight. Perhaps it will heat up and we'll get some real spontaneous combustion. Both fighters, I think, feel as though they want to land some big shots now. So we should start seeing some things happen. De La Hoya told us yesterday that he wanted to pressure Whitaker in the first three rounds because he thought the older man would try to conserve his energy. But he has not been able to penetrate Whitaker's defense enough to put real pressure on him for long periods of time. No, but he did pressure him good at the end of, of that last round. No, the last minute of the second round was definitely De La Hoya's best minute of the first six. Now Whitaker working the jab again. Two very good jabs by Whitaker. Because as you can see from time to time, De La Hoya lowers that left hand. He does that because he likes to throw the left hook from a low angle. Kind of a half hook, half uppercut. That punch may not work against Whitaker's stance. Hard left hand over the top by Whitaker. De La Hoya is still pushing forward. Not throwing as many right hand leads as perhaps he ought to to open Whitaker up. Because Whitaker is going to Oscar's left, which doesn't allow Oscar to see the right hand as much. Ho, 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 and step back most of it. Have, 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 come on, come on. Oscar pounding to the body with the left work hand. Come on, work out. And coming up with an uppercut. You heard both corners asking for uppercuts. De La Hoya landed the first big one. Whitaker goes back to the jab to back him off. Side 
landed for Delaware. Hey, 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 no, wait a minute, but don't do this. Come on, come on, come on. Mills Lane, anxious that we don't see a headbutt. Well, there was a butt right there. I don't know if any blood will come out, but there was definitely a butt. And Whitaker throws Deloya down. That'll be a slip, not a knockdown. An obvious effort to frustrate Delahoya, and the headbutt has cut Delahoya under the eye. It's a butt. It's a Mills Lane making clear to all the judges it was a butt. Delahoya shaking his head in disappointment. He's got a cut under the right eye as the result of a Whitaker headbutt. But it, it seemed inadvertent, and it doesn't seem that it will bother De La Hoya very much if he doesn't let it bother him. Here's a second look at the butt. As you see Whitaker coming from down, trying to get in close with a good body punch. His head and his left hand landed simultaneously. At the, at the end of the round, De La Hoya turned the tide with that left hook inside, left uppercut, sorry. This is an excellent fight. It's a very even fight so far, and it's beginning to boil down to just what we thought it might be, a battle of De La Hoya's heavy artillery against Purnell Whitaker's sophistication and skill. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Jim, 29-28, two rounds to one. Oscar De La Hoya, I gave him rounds two and three based on his, on his better punching. Jim, just in case anybody's interested, the rules of the WBC are you lose a point, uh, the, uncut, the uncut fighter loses a point on an accidental headbutt. I asked Mills Lane, he didn't take a point. So it's two to one, De La Hoya. I have the same score. Still appears there's a swight, slight swelling under the right eye of Purnell Whitaker. De La Hoya, as you can see, has the mouse under the right eye. The blood has been stopped for the moment. Hard Good right hand by, by De La Hoya. Good right hand by Oscar De La Hoya. And again, Whitaker comes in with the head, and De La Hoya is obviously wary of butt. As he stopped punching as Whitaker came in. That's going to happen a lot because these guys have their power hand is on the same side. Therefore, their heads will be lined up perfectly when they come into one another. So there are going to be few, a few butts in this fight. And it yes, would be Whitaker, horrible to see such a hotly anticipated bout end as the result of a headbutt. And Whitaker does have a mouse over his right eye. Now that's his lead eye. So if in fact his vision is affected in the later rounds, that could be an element of the fight. So far in the tactical battle, De La Hoya, at least in the last minute of the rounds, giving as good as he's getting. But it's a little disappointing to see that De La Hoya, who is stronger, is really not trying to impose his strength on Whitaker. Perhaps he's saving it for later. Well, you heard his trainer, Jesus Rivero, asking him between rounds to create more distance between himself and Whitaker. Get a lot of distance, he said. Didn't yeah. want him to get into a brawl. Yeah, because it makes it more difficult for Whitaker to hit him, being the shot of the two fighters. Whitaker misses over the top with a left hand. De La Hoya showing you his always improving flexibility in the upper body as he ducks and slips. Another right hand lead by De La Hoya as he tries to pick Whitaker apart tactically. Good right hand by 
De La Hoya. Bobbing left to right and then throwing the right hand lead. Obviously something he's worked on specifically for this fight. And De La Hoya flurries at the end of the round. That catches the eye of the judges. I wonder if they're going to let him steal the round with those last ten, that last 10 second flurry. Because I thought Whitaker had it until then. Try to do him close round, right? Okay, now, he's not part of the fight. Let's put enough pressure on this guy. All right, I know. All right, as soon as you get close to this guy, she got enough of a cup, but you gotta come back with another bar. Hey, baby, you go home with that. I'm talking fast, I know. Okay, look. Throw that uppercut and bring it. Con tus pasos laterales, déjalo entrar. Para recibirlo, chico. No te pares en la pelea así, hazlo trabajar. Well, you see Oscar De La Hoya switching southpaw. It had been anticipated that sometime during the fight he would try it. None of that landed. He threw about eight blows. It looked better than it was. But we have now learned that Mills Lane has taken away a point for that accidental butt because the WBC rules dictate that he does. So that's an additional point for De La Hoya or a, or a point taken away from Whitaker. Meaning that on the scorecards where De La Hoya was given the fourth round, if in fact he was, he may be four points ahead. Hard punches from Whitaker, a right and a left. Whitaker going back to the jab, which served him so well in round number one, where he threw 41 of them and landed 14. De La Hoya going back to the right-hand lead, which has been his weapon so far. Along with the uppercut, slippage here. Right on, that, right on that spot that Larry talked about. They yeah. meet in the center of the ring and go to the body. Yeah. Harold, how do you have it through four? <laughs> okay, 39, 36, three rounds to one. Oscar De La Hoya. What happens is, is on, on, a, on an accidental headbutt, the uncut fighter loses one point to the WBC. If Mills Lane took that point in the third round, it becomes a 10-8 round for De La Hoya. So, Oscar by three points. Whitaker's eye continues gradually to swell. That's the right eye. De La Hoya not having switched to the southpaw stance at any time in this round. He swore to us yesterday that he hadn't worked on it in training and wouldn't do it, but you saw him do it at the end of the preceding round. Whitaker always so good at choosing his opportunities while backing up and drawing you in. wildly to everything De La Hoya attempts. Missed punches, drawing almost as much approval as those which land. Whitaker trying to box De La Hoya a little more now, trying to land a few more punches on him to get to him. He's jabbing more, he's slipping more. This has been Whitaker's best round to this point. But still he isn't landing a whole lot, Larry. Not a whole lot, but he's landing more than De La Hoya right now. If he's winning the round, he's winning it more with ring generalship than he is with clean punches. And, and that jab right there. But he's landed more punches than De La Hoya, from my viewpoint. He's basically winning this round with the There's jab. There's the switch to southpaw again. He used it to flurry at the end of the last round. Stays in the southpaw stance, jabs with the right hand. And remember, De La Hoya is a natural southpaw who fights in a right-hand position. His left hand is his strongest hand. When he goes southpaw that way, he gets to throw the left as a cross, as a power punch. He's used to, southpaws are not used to left hand coming at them. How are you feeling? Are you okay? Listen up. If you, if, you, if you change to the southpaw, you got to face him. If you turn southpaw, then, then you got to do that bending and hit him with the right and then come back with the left hook. You got to have that bending and then the combination. Stop. Hey, stop. Relax. Relax. Relax in the corner. Relax. Cool. Listen to me. Now listen to me. Okay, just listen to me. 
He's snapping the jab. Snap the jab. Yeah. He's snapping the jab like you're doing. The jab uh -huh. is beautiful. Okay. As soon as you get close to him, okay. all your match you do is let both hands go with the guy oh. and get occasional body yeah. shot. Uh -huh. Okay. That's all I'm saying. If Whitaker, I'm sorry, if Delahoya really thought he was going to walk through Whitaker. I now he starts around in the southpaw stance. I wonder what he thinks now. Left hand to the body by De La Hoya. Is he going to fight the full round in the southpaw stance? He is, and he lands a straight left to Whitaker that backs him up. Now, why would a fighter who has been a great young fighter like De La Hoya feel he's got to change his natural best style against Cornell Whitaker, Roy? A confidence booster. He's trying to show Whitaker that he can do anything that he wants to do in here. This but is I, the way, this is part of the head game scheme that we're on. But I but haven't he, seen any positive results from this switch. Well, it well, looks good, it's flashy, but I don't oh, see him landing any real punches. Come on, come on, I see on, a positive man, result. He gets to, to throw his best punch, the left hand, from a power position. Now he goes back to the conventional stance. And of course, as Roy pointed out, Southpaws aren't used to facing other southpaws and seeing the left hand come at them. No, they're not. They're used to seeing right-handers most of the time because 90% of the time, that's what they'll be in with, training and fighting. There he goes back to the southpaw stance. Whitaker misses over the top. You would think that Cornell Whitaker would want to attack him constantly when he's in this southpaw stance to test what would be an inexperienced defense. Yep, yeah, he doesn't want to run into Oscar's left hand. He knows that's Oscar's best punch. And there you go. That's the reason for the southpaw stance. Well, that was the first real punch he landed. I don't agree. I think he's landed two or three other good ones. You saw that Whitaker tried to hit him with a big left hand, missed it, and Delaware brightly came back with his own right. De La Hoya switching back and forth throughout the sixth round. Southpaw conventional, back to Southpaw. Whitaker, not punching as often in this round, now goes back to work in the jab. Goes to the conventional stance. De La Hoya throws the straight right hand. Whitaker short with most of these jabs. There's one that landed. And a couple of left hands as he held on to De La Hoya's left arm. Mills Lane trying to gain command of the fight. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. He's making a move on him and he's catching him when he's got him off balance. Just like when he relaxes inside, Oscar De La Hoya is hitting him with a right or a left uppercut. Hard left hand by Whitaker there. Closing seconds of round six, halfway through, a tactical battle between the two great welterweights. Very close fight, very close fight. We in the fight, baby. You understand? We are in the fight, okay? We're gonna win it. I know we're gonna win it. I know damn well we're gonna win it. I know you got, I know you're exactly what you're doing. All right? I just keep, keep scoring no. points with the jab. Let me get the that left hand? No. no. John, just leave me alone. That's okay. Right. Don't worry about it. Right. No. Don't stop getting fresh with that jaw, all right? Leave you alone. No, no. Listen to me. Just, just your life, baby. Look, you're I looking beautiful out there. I, I know you got. I see it. I see it. I, I see it. it. I right. feel you, baby. I know you feel yeah. me. I feel it. you, too. We're we we together. We're dead if we're together. That's Ronnie Shields, who's doing all the talking in Whitaker's corner. You need to stay on, the, get on your, on your left side, but be careful. Don't crouch so much. Good look at the slightly swelling right eye of Brunel Whitaker. The mouse under De La Hoya's right eye has not yet been a problem for him since he incurred that as the result of the headbutt earlier in the fight. In round six, 12 of Whitaker's 19 connected punches were jabs. De La Hoya landing many more power shots. It's 
Check in one more time with Harold Letterman. How do you have it halfway through? Jim, I got it very close. Three rounds apiece, 57-56, Oscar De La Hoya, based on the one point that uh, referee Mills Lane took away on that really, I don't know, it's a bad rule, but it was the accidental headbutt. Uh, I agree with you, Harold. Uh, if it's a, it was an accidental headbutt, but it was below the eye. It did no serious damage and has not affected the Larry, fight. Larry, let me explain it. The president of the WBC, Jose Suleiman, insists that if a guy gets an accidental headbutt, he has to even it out somehow or another. So he takes a point from the uncut fighter. That's his justification for it. I don't believe it's the fair thing to do. An accident is an accident. I think if the cut is in a place where it may show up to be something in the future, a point should be taken. But if it's not, then I think the fight should be left alone. Another thing that sometimes happens between southpaws and conventional fighters when they get their feet tangled up. Now Whitaker completely turns his back on De La Hoya as De La Hoya chases him with right hand power shots. Purnell goes back to the jab. De La Hoya has to make sure not, that he doesn't get frustrated and over anxious right here at this point. This is the type of tactics that can make him get frustrated and get him out of his head. Whitaker is used to this type of stuff. More and more, Whitaker seems to be loading up and trying to land one big left hand shot which could change things in the bout. A good body shot by Whitaker. Excellent body punch, one of his best in several rounds. Yo, yeah. the fight would look better for Whitaker in the later rounds. Straight right hand by De La Hoya stops Whitaker's progress there. Roy, do you see any age showing on Whitaker? Just in some of his punches sometime. He's just a little bit wider than he was in his younger days, but not much. But everybody's gonna show a little bit of age. By keeping his distance, as De La Hoya does. De La Hoya has a nosebleed right now. He misses the chance to try to use his greater size to push Whitaker around, knock him off balance, try to get into his head with a little manhandling. Lands a long right hand there. Remember tonight, though, Whitaker is the heavier of the two fighters right now. De La Hoya with a trickle of blood out of the right nostril. Product to Purnell Whitaker's jab. And De La Hoya at Whitaker and offering a physical barb as he goes back to his corner. I think Whitaker's getting into You're his standing head. too still. I know he's getting into his head a little bit. Tell me the truth. Are you tired? Okay, you got to move around. Be, be aware when he's throwing the punches. When he throws a shot, move back and connect. Let's see if we can dominate him now. All right, here is the tackle in the middle of this rather gentle tactical fight. I'm not sure what De La Hoya is celebrating. This has hardly been his finest hour, but it isn't over. Come on, Lou. The fighters are getting a little closer to one another now, and we should start looking for some bigger shots to be landed. Another thing I noticed, Whitaker is not picking that right foot up as nearly as much as he used to do tonight. Punch that numbers through round seven. Scorer's nightmare. Whitaker landing more punches and landing at a higher percentage rate. De La Hoya with a huge edge in power shots, landing 85 hooks and crosses and uppercuts to only 36 for Whitaker. What do you like, more punches or harder punches? I can't say that I've seen that many hard punches. I gotta disagree with the numbers there. There you saw a De La Hoya slip on that canvas, which we pointed out earlier, was a little slippery. I haven't seen him land 85 hard punches, certainly not cleanly. You don't land that kind of punches on, on Pernell Whitaker. De La Hoya hasn't used the left jab all that much since the second or third round. Goes back to it momentarily Good there. Good right hand counter by De La Hoya. Excellent. Oh, 
take a step back and give it a punt. One thing that strikes me, if Whitaker is going to win a decision against Delaware and outbox him, he's got to be busier. And to me, he does not look markedly busier than the younger fighter at this point. Well, he can't just go in there and be busy against Delahoya. Delahoya is too big of a puncher for that. He has to be very economical in what he does. He knows that. Whitaker lamenting the missed left, and Delahoya coming forward to say, take a couple of right hands to go with that. Delahoya was caught with a right hook coming in just in himself. Both fighters, I think, are fighting a very small fight. Got a left hook in. Not easy to do. Whitaker smiles. And almost guarantee you that means that thudding left hook did some business. You know it's not a great fight when the fighters have time to smile after they land their punches. It's still a tactical battle. That punch blocked by De La Hoya. Whitaker pawing with the jab. Straight right hands as Oscar tries to flurry again in the closing seconds of the round. Whitaker lands the last punch. Come on, Pete. All right, okay, wait till oh, the oh, oh, no. We're telling you to I'm you telling you right now. That's okay. We're, I'm telling you right now. We're behind in the fight. Right. Right. I'm just telling down. you right now. Okay. You want to okay. Too, I lose again. No, 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 no. no. You're gonna win. You're gonna knock you. this guy out. Win the fucking fight. You gotta punch. That's no, your punch. No. 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 Jab. You gotta faint him. When you faint him, and and throw that uppercut or oh, follow. Si te pones a la zurda, if you turn left, make sure you get the uppercut. A ver si puedes. Mira. Here you see that these fighters are so happy sometimes when they either land or miss a punch that they are that they are gesturing. That means there's just not enough punches landing. There's a good left hook by De La Hoya. It was an odd exchange which we didn't get all together in Whitaker's corner in which some one of his handlers said, you're behind in this fight. And Whitaker, who I believe thinks he is, was ahead, is saying, well, then I'm going to lose. Meaning that if, if, if he's got to do something else except what he's doing, he doesn't know if he can do it. That's right. You can't get, thing, it, you can't ahead, get into a verbal battle in the corner. You have to stay out of that. You just have to tell him what he's doing wrong and try to tell him, okay, you might be behind. You can't just say you're losing. The guy doesn't want to hear that and he's out there fighting his heart out. You're right, Roy. Well, it's a very talkative corner. They've been together a long time and Brunel has very special relationships with both Ronnie Shields and Lou Duva. So I'm sure they would say to you, we can do our business our way. The one criticism I would have, you saw the punch stat numbers that show that only in one round in the fight has Whitaker thrown as many as 60 punches. I don't think he can beat De La Hoya throwing 44 punches around. Yeah, but how many is De La Hoya throwing? About 40 or 44. Yeah, but how many is he landing? Don't spin him. Come on, get that spin. Come on, let's go. How many is he landing, don't you? He's landing fewer than uh, Purnell. There you go. So but his, his, you have a his good landed fight. punches have more effect. Well, you think. We shall know. see. Like I said, score is nightmare. <laughs> You're right, because you can't really tell what, the, we what you like. We can see three wildly different scorecards at the end of this fight. Because it's according to what you like. You're right there. That's what makes boxing so different. Well, like, Oscar De La Hoya may win this fight, but you can't say that his introduction into the welterweight division has been a huge success so far. Well, he picked the toughest fight he could possibly pick to enter the division. You're right there. Goes back to the southpaw stance, does De La Hoya. I have to even argue that. That could have been scored a knockdown. It is a knockdown. It is a knockdown. It is a knockdown. Yeah, it's a it is knockdown. A knockdown. De La Hoya's knee touching the canvas. <laughs> So that, that gets back, that point taken away from Whitaker if we have a two-point round.
And De La Hoya, at this moment, may be regretting having gone to the southpaw stance as he wound up losing his balance and went down from a very light blow. It's like a trick play in football. What's the point? You do what you do best, especially if you think you're younger and you're stronger. Whitaker lefts to the body. De La Hoya writes upstairs. De La Hoya lands a left. Goes in and attacks Whitaker's body. And Pernell comes back with counter shots. Turning it to a good fight. Turning into a fight, that's for sure. Oscar, how come you're not dominating at the distance? Are you tired? Then, then what? You need to dominate the distance. Let's not, let's not get in a, a dog fight here. You're not fainting him at all. You'll see it was a short left inside with De La Hoya, I believe, a little bit off balance right there. A punch put him on the floor. Not a great punch, but a punch. And that's what a knockdown is. Definitely. Very good round for Whitaker. He threw 59 punches. That's the kind of punch output he needs to keep De La Hoya back on his heels. Three rounds to go in what you would suspect is a close fight. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Jim, very, very close. Five rounds to four. Oscar De La Hoya, 85, 84 in points. A one-point lead for De La Hoya. I like his power shots, but I want to tell you something, Jim. He's got very poor traction. He's wearing an unconventional boxing shoe, meaning De La Hoya. And I think that he slipped when he got hit. If you go down on the end of the punch, it's a knockdown. Those lane pulled it correctly. But I'm telling you, he's been slipping the whole fight with those shoes. Do you suspect, Harold, that all three judges would have given Whitaker a 10-8 round there? I really think they should. The referee did call it a knockdown. It was a clean knockdown. He went down on the end of the punch. There's no reason not to give Whitaker a 10-8 round. I didn't ask if they should. Do you think they would? Yes. Good right hand by De La Hoya. Neither fighter is too busy now, Jim. I think they're looking to lay big punches right now. Whitaker's trying to land a straight left. De La Hoya is trying to land a right-hand lead. Whitaker popping De La Hoya with the jab as Oscar tries to come in. Whatever the outcome of this fight, against one of the best young fighters in the world, the 33-year-old Pernell Whitaker, is holding his own, which gives you an idea of just how great he was in his prime. This shot by De La Hoya. And as Whitaker keeps going forward here, De La Hoya gets a chance to counter effectively, but again, Whitaker lands the jab. De La Hoya lands a power shot in return. Now Whitaker, uh, De La Hoya is boxing like her title fought Whitaker. And Whitaker had nothing but trouble with her title before he knocked him out in the 11th. Now he's doing something that he should have been considered doing all night long. Which is? Moving in boxing. Don't try to trade Whitaker. Make Whitaker come at him and do like her title did him. Why shouldn't you trade with him? You're stronger than he is. You're younger than he is. Doesn't You're supposed to be quicker than he is. Supposed to. He doesn't have the experience that, to trade with Whitaker like that. He's a superb fighter, but he doesn't have that kind of experience where he just trade with Pernell Whitaker. Great flurry by De La Hoya to end the tenth. Whitaker gets a couple body shots back in return. Two rounds left. Two rounds. Two rounds left is all we got. <laughs>
He's gonna be more tired than you. No, we only got two rounds to go. All you gotta do is lateral movement. If you turn southpaw, make sure you bend and then hit him with the right hand. Come on, you know, you know you got to do that. You know that. Let's go with it. The right hand is gonna do it for you. You gotta throw it. I wish they would just tell Oscar De La Hoya, go out and win the fight, kid. Not easier said than done, Larry. When you're out there with a guy who knows what well, he's doing. Well, but I mean, instead of all this technical mumbo jumbo, bend at the waist, by this time in the fight, he knows what he can do and what Whitaker could do. He's got to, he's got to impose himself on this old guy. It's not that easy when you have an old guy that won't let you impose yourself on him. Whitaker's not going to back down to nobody. If you've been in there a couple of times with a guy like that, when you see guys who have hung around for a long period of time, it's because they have strong inner self. He's a very strong inside person. He's not going to let nobody come in there and just walk over him. Now, what about De La Hoya bouncing here to begin the 11th and perhaps trying to communicate to Whitaker that he's still got his legs and he's going to be able to out-muscle him and outrun him in these last two rounds? This is what he wants to do right here, outbox Whitaker and try to win the fight on point. He's came to the conclusion that he's not going to hit Whitaker with a big enough shot going at him to, to knock him out. So he wants to try to outbox Whitaker now. That's what he should have been thinking all night. Whitaker is the, young, is the older fighter. You don't go out there and try to outbox him. You give him a chance to win the fight. You think the judges are going to penalize De La Hoya, as Larry obviously is mentally, for being too cautious? I don't know. I know he's going to get himself in a dog fight now, though. All right, hey, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Shots from De La Hoya as Whitaker turned and clowned for the crowd. Not sure who Whitaker was looking for over there. Maybe his buddy Evander Holyfield or Mark Breland. Now he's complaining because De La Hoya was hitting him with a shoulder. Good jab by Whitaker. Whitaker sticking the jab. Whitaker often commanding the space horizontally, back and forth from side to side. De La Hoya with another relatively cautious round. Switches to the southpaw stance, which I think served him well early, but then later might have gotten him in trouble. Just missed with the left hand. Didn't have a lot of snap behind it anyway. Hard left hands for Whitaker. Two in a row. And another good left hand counter inside for Sweet Pea. Very confident as round 11 comes down the stretch. With a cast to make sure that he doesn't let Oscar catch him when they're like right there tied up. Right when the referee would never step in and say break, Oscar's trying to hit Whitaker with a good punch. A fight almost breaks out amid this tactical boxing match. But the bell stops it. One round to go. If you want it, it's right there for you. It's right there for you, baby. They're I don't want to score it. No, baby. No. It's hey, right there for you. They're doing three units, all right? But this round can decide the Let's fight. Let's win. Okay, just give me do it. Let me give you some order. Give me a deep drop. Give me a deep drop. Give me a deep drop. You've got to be in the outside. I just want to stop the bleeding. Cambias golpes. Tienes que hacer bending, caldeando golpes. No solo así. Uno y dos. Keep snapping the jab out. When you get close, the guy's just trying to out-hustle you now. This kid ain't got shit left. You understand? He's going to come out punching, punching. Pete. You've got to be in a good balance. With anything, you can grab this guy. You can hit him with anything. Throw the punches. De La Hoya has always been a very good closer. There you see his father. The balance could hang here. Whitaker seems to have this fight under control right now, but he has to make sure that he doesn't get knocked out here in this last round. 
It's the third time in Oscar De La Hoya's career that he has gone the 12 round distance in each of the two predecessors against John John Molina and Miguel Angel Gonzalez. As Larry told you, he closed out brilliantly with dominant 12th rounds. He starts slowly here. Harold, how do you have it going to the last round? Jim, I agree with Lou Duva. This is a close fight. Six rounds to five, 104, 103, Oscar De La Hoya. I think it's about as close as you can get. I think this 12th is gonna decide the fight. I have Whitaker ahead by about a point myself. I don't know if either fighter deserves to win this fight if it ends this way. Big flurry for De La Hoya a moment ago. Whitaker looking for tactical opportunities to land that left and keep sticking the right. De La Hoya loves to overwhelm his opponents with energy in the 12th. Hard to do that against a guy whose style is giving you fits, as Whitaker's style is giving De La Hoya fits. So what will it be? The welterweight coronation of the rising golden boy, or the final affirmation of the champion's Hall of Fame status? A minute and a half left for Brunel Whitaker to make one more great statement on his career, or for Oscar De La Hoya to begin building a bridge to immortality. I think it's going to take 12 more rounds to tell who's truly the better fighter. Uh, in my view, Pernell Whitaker has already made his statement, regardless, as I've said before, of the outcome here. It would be a shame if that absurd WBC rule that resulted in a point going to De La Hoya for an unintentional butt that did no damage would be the deciding factor in this fight. De La Hoya busier with combinations, landing more in the 12th so far. Whitaker trying to okay, turn the tide. On, De La Hoya come ties on, him up. Angle, 20 on, seconds to go. On, so on. far, a little more energy in 12 from the younger man. 10 seconds left. And Whitaker ended the fight backing up and clowning, which may or may not serve him well. Chapter one, Oscar De La Hoya versus Pernell Whitaker. And off of that, in all likelihood, more to come. Definitely. As we await the decision, we look back at some critical moments in the fight, starting with round number three, when Brunel Whitaker wrestled Oscar De La Hoya into the ropes and head-butted him under the right eye. There's the head-butt. The left-hand punch was going to the body, but the head-butt came up and created a mouse and some bleeding under De La Hoya's right eye. But it never really seemed to bother Oscar that much more in the fight. In round four, he switched to a southpaw stance, and with that southpaw stance, ended the round with a flurry of punches just as he did several times throughout the 12 rounds will this catch the eye of the judges it didn't impress larry merchant who thought that he didn't land anything out of that stance i felt differently then in round nine the controversial knockdown as de la Hoya's knee and glove went to the canvas while the two fighters wrestled closely together and whitaker was landing a soft left hand to the chin one point removed from whitaker for the headbutt and De La Hoya probably losing a point because of the knockdown. And let's go to Michael Buffer for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. By way of Caesars Palace, here is the Budweiser scorecards. Chuck Jappa scores about 115 to 111. Jerry Roth has it 116 to 110. And Dalby Shirley scores it 116 to 110. For the winner by unanimous decision. And new! Yeah! Featherweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya.
So De La Hoya gets a unanimous decision by scores that might have been, for many, unexpectedly wide. Certainly unexpectedly wide for Harold Letterman, our score. How'd you have it after 12, Harold? Jim, seven rounds to five, 114, 112, Oscar De La Hoya. In my mind, there was no question he won it. He won that 12th round big to pull it out, but a little bit closer than the judges had it. Ladies and gentlemen, round 12 is the first to beat since 1989. The unanimous decision victory for De La Hoya. Larry Merchant's with him in the ring. All right, th thank you very much. Oscar, was the final result in doubt for you till the end? Almost. That, I, I felt that uh, Prina Whitaker was uh, not connecting his punches. He had a nice jab. That's a real good jab. I gave him a lot of credit for that. But um, I thought I pulled enough to win the fight. I thought I heard you say somewhere in the middle of the fight that you were a little tired. Did you get a second win? Well, not, not, not tired. Not at all. Frustrated because of... of uh, Bernard Whitaker's uh, lefty. He uh, gave me a lot of headbutts right in the face. They hurt. You were unable to really do what you do best against him and really to impose your youth and strength on him. Does that bother you? Almost oh, definitely. That's why we're going to give him the rematch. No, Anytime, anywhere. So you're fr frustrated because you feel it wasn't an Oscar De La Hoya performance? Well, I'm frustrated because I could have done much, much better. I was expecting Whitaker to be faster and stronger, but um, now that I know his style, uh, I'll go back to the gym, learn it some more, prepare myself better, and do it again. Didn't you come into this fight thinking that you would walk right through him, that he was a little too small and not as strong as you? Well, I would say I would put the pressure, but um, for now, Whitaker is very difficult. His softball style can intimidate anyone, believe me. But you seem very pleased with the result, regardless of your frustration. Almost oh, definitely. Anybody will be frustrated against Pernell Whitaker. I mean, he showed it. He's an undefeated fighter, a six-time world champion, and this young kid beat him. Do you want a rematch? Oh, I do. I would love it anywhere, anytime. Why? Well, because I know I can do much better. You feel that you can stop him, and until you get a, ch a chance to do that, you're going to feel unfulfilled? Is that what you're saying? I think um, I'll feel unfulfilled until I know that I really, really dominated his style of a softball fighter. Softballs are very difficult to, to handle. They're very difficult. Speaking of which, you turned southpaw a few times during the fight. Um, it didn't just seem to be wholly effective. Why were you doing it? Well, because it would um, confuse Whitaker, that's for sure. I would feign him to the body and come back with my right hook, which connected, I think, three times, and I tried it three times. But um, a rematch, anytime. No. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Oscar De La Hoya. Thank you. Jim and Roy, we'll be back with Pernell Whitaker in a moment. And quickly, let's take a look at final punch stat numbers, and you can see that Whitaker threw 25 more punches. Whitaker landed 41 more punches and landed at a higher percentage. But the difference which the judges observed came in power shots, where De La Hoya landed more than twice as many hooks and crosses and uppercuts as Whitaker and also De La Hoya, as you saw, so frequently flurried at the end of close rounds. Perhaps he stole some rounds that way. Jabs, that belonged to Whitaker, 41% to 23%. De La Hoya, of course, faced an uphill fight trying to land jabs because Whitaker's right shoulder was right there in front of the jab the whole time. Let's go back to Larry Merchant with the former welterweight titleist, Pernell Whitaker. All right, Pernell Whitaker, did you think you won the fight? Oh, my gosh, of course. Uh, well, that really doesn't matter, Larry, because one thing about it is the, the world saw it. As long as the world saw the fight, then the people can judge why, for why do you Why do you think you, you won the, the fight? fight? No, you Who tell did? me. You're in the ring. You're oh, the closest one to of it. Of course. Well, I, I don't keep... I should have gotten 10 out of 12 rounds. You know, it was unbelievable. It was a shutout. Do you think he was stealing rounds with flurries? That's bullshit. I don't want to hear that. That's, that's a cop-out. That's you giving them excuses. For the 12 rounds, he took a punishment, took a beating. The public saw it. The world saw it. You saw it. Did you ever hurt he him? He have the title, but we, we know who the best fighter is. Did he, did, did no. he ever hurt you? No, but you saw I hurt him, though. Never in this fight. That's why the second time around would be so easy. I don't even know if he'll fight me again, but I know one thing. Sports Illustrated, this is my third cover that I have robbed twice. What do you mean by that? Because I've been robbed again. You think you've been robbed? What were they telling you? What's your name? We're good friends. 
the world I'll wants tell you, to know I'll, how you feel about it. I'll tell you in a moment. But what was your corner telling you about the score and how they thought you were oh, doing? It was a blowout, shutout. It was a shutout. What else could I do? I couldn't perform any better than that without no, getting hit or anything. I don't even, it doesn't even matter, you know, because the world saw it and the people saw it and my family saw it. I was there, so I saw it. Do you feel that you performed up to your expectations oh my God. and that you yes. had turned the clock back successfully? I, I, know, I know I did. You know, uh, that was the perfect thing about it, that, you know, we came out here and expressed the old, the Pernod Whitaker of old. The people, the, the movement, the, the pizzazz, the, the, the ring generation. Are you I, saying that you had a good time tonight? I had a great time. I had a fabulous time, and uh, it was a great fight. The, the world saw it, so I hope everyone enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Pernell Whitaker. And just for the record, I thought that Pernell Whitaker won a narrow decision. And now to James Brown. All right, Larry. Well, statistically, you saw the numbers. Pernell Whitaker landed a lot more, but the power punches went the way of the younger Oscar De La Hoya. So style and impression certainly carried the evening as far as Oscar De La Hoya is concerned. Very impressed with Oscar's graciousness and honesty in that post-fight interview. Said that he would give Pernell Whitaker a rematch. Willingly, we'll find out if it takes place. All right, folks, so we believe that the fans certainly got their money's worth in terms of seeing an exciting fight that went the distance.